Welcome to Digitized Desperados, episode 29. Today we're going to be discussing The Handmaid. That's very enthusiastic, 29. Well, yeah, it's 29. 29. It's, it's, it's a good one. It's a good number. What, what's special about 29? Is it prime? Is it a prime number? I don't think it is. I'm going to Google that. I have ADHD. Hold on. Before I should we... have said nothing. <laughs> now it we're is 29 in... prime, and then we'll get to the actual episode starting. <laughs> It is. Okay, cool. Whatever. Yeah! Neat. Math facts. So this Anyways, is a prime Handmaiden. It's pri I watched it on Amazon Prime. <laughs> I did too. I Both watched of... it mostly on Kiss Asian because I didn't know it was Amazon Prime. You mean on, on an anonymous streaming site that is legal? Yes. I, Perfectly um, legal streaming, not piracy. Actually, both of our movies... This this week are on Amazon Prime. Fun fact: um, today is The Handmaiden. Um, it is directed by Park Chan Wook, who is well known for Old Boy. Uh, Old Boy is what I expected this movie to be like, and it is not because Old Boy is basically a uh, South Korean John Wick. This is not that. <laughs> While that is very much the case, man, was this interesting. It's a great movie. I, I love really it. like this. A lot of I had a really good time with it. Like I was a little hesitant because the description said it's a it's a drama, and I was like, okay, oh, okay, no, we're gonna no, get no. some like bullshit happening. But like this is like some clever bullshit. No, okay. So Wikipedia describes it as an erotic thriller. Psychologically, uh, that's still not a really good <laughs> description. I think it's terrible. I think it's a. Uh, I don't know espionage kind of thing no because yeah. that makes it sound like it's a spy thing it kind of is though yeah but it makes it sound like it's like a 007 kind of yeah, spy it's thing not, it's not political it's just i mean it is political whatever it's not high stakes political no it's actually very low stakes which is what uh i noticed a lot throughout the movie it's there's not a lot of threat of much um it's kind of just a weird love triangle that gets wild. There's like a yeah. threat that somebody's gonna get like okay, there's the thrown basement. in jail, maybe at worst like executed, but at the like very worst, it's gonna be like three people. There's the the basement, which is probably the biggest Ooh. threat. The entire thing. <laughs> I think we'll get to that later. I want to save that. Um, yeah. It's split into three parts, which is really interesting. It's actually based on a novel. Um, huh. I believe it's based on an English novel. Yeah, it's, like, loosely based on... And from what I can tell, the first part is, like, identical, but the rest of it is just completely different, because it's set in, um... The, the novel is set in, uh, Victorian-era Britain. Mm. Yeah, that would this not is, really work out. This is actually, um... It's when K Korea was occupied by Japan right after World War II, or during? During. I'm not sure. I don't know what was going on with Korea. Um, just know that Japan was very, uh, very, very bad. It's during. It's during? Yeah, okay. that's what I thought. Um, the only context you need for this movie is that Japan to Korea was horrible. Like, war crime, genocide, mm -hmm. it, it, really bad. It's a really bad place in history. Um, this movie largely ignores it, but there's a little bit of hesitation. There's a little bit of culture importance. Mm-hmm. Because mm -hmm. the setting is this poor woman is hired to be a handmaiden in this rich Japanese noble, so you know, they're from out of country. Um, and you don't get the full context of that later because it's very Tarantino-esque in that you get a lot of different different uh, time perspectives. Mm -hmm. It jumps around, but it makes it clear when things are after the fact, you know? Yeah. So part, part one is the plot from our main character Suki's perspective, which was spelled differently between versions because the Amazon sub put it as one word like Suki, but the actual name is Suki. With Yeah, with an hyphen in between. It's not, it's not important, but I just wanted to say that. So the first part is Suki. Um, the second part is the same story with a little bit of background from the other main female protagonist a little bit of background <laughs> yeah um and then the third part is just a continuation from all their perspective yes yeah the third part is like the finale yeah it's like, the okay one, now you know everything now we can just go from where we left off yeah part one is uh here this is what's happening 
part two is part, no it's part not one. this is what happened part, <laughs> and then part three part is like is, now let's show you how this continues part one i was a little concerned about when i was starting because i was kind of bored it's a little comedic it's kind of like a rom-com there's weird like romantic and sexual tension between the two leads mm -hmm. um I, especially I think that, a oh my god that more than filing. sexual tension right there that tooth filing scene is oh that tooth filing scene was very gay oh my god uh, <laughs> highly oh yeah another funny thing is originally i had another movie picked out for pride month but we skipped pride month but <laughs> looks like it caught um, up with us lo, lo and behold this movie ended up being really gay anyway i didn't know that uh, going in when we say gay it's like a good thing I, it's fantastic a lot of people no. say gay in a bad way but like we're not those i won't people. um it's a very 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 positive movie which i i was surprised at. uh-huh yes um but the first part is kind of light kind of comedic until the end um oh yeah no I... that twist at the end of part one like from then on i was like hooked yeah, in. <laughs> after that point you're like oh my god <laughs> I, I will say during okay so the first part is i, I want to get to like the premise of it at least yeah. you know so people know what's mm -hmm. going on uh -huh. you have this handmaiden moves in to this rich noble woman's like house to be like the maid and she's moving in so that her uncle or yeah right her uncle can like uh, or you mean the count? He's yeah, the not count. Related. I don't know He's what the related. relation is here. They're, they're the count name. is a con man, and Suki yeah. is from a family of like pickpockets. Yeah. They're so basically, they have this plot together where they're gonna get him with the noble woman, and then he's gonna chuck the noble woman in a sale asylum, and he's just gonna, you know, take off with all the money. And you think and it's just a plot Suki where they bit. fall in love with each other, anyways? Yeah. Or the. the um, the handmaiden falls in love with her anyways and that ruins everything but yeah, it's not quite the, exactly what's going on yeah you think that like so it's going to be a plot where suki the handmaiden and hideko the the noble woman are going to fall in love and elope and like run away from all their troubles but then you get to part two well no well i mean the ending of part one where you're like it, okay after some struggle yeah. and such Hey, Hideko and Fujiwara, with the Count, end up getting married, and then they run away, and it's like, okay, yeah, things are all gonna work out. They're gonna just go through with the plan as we know it. Yeah, and then like she's gonna like disappointedly throw the Japanese noblewoman into jail, even though that they have yeah. established that they love each other, anyways. But then you realize that hey, there's like well over an hour left in this movie. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and I then. Thought... Maybe Suki like... is thrown into the asylum in Hideko's place, and you're initially like, oh my god, this is a big double cross. Hideko n n knew all along, and this is a big backstab moment. Uh huh. And that's still not even kind of what actually happened. No, no, yes. it's not even close. That's not even actually what happens at all. <laughs> Part you're one just to think that. Part one gives you like 10% of the plot. <laughs> Yeah, pretty much. Um, which is why I think it's probably the worst part. No, it's important, but it's it's great. Um, it's just it's it's good. It's just a lot slower than the rest. It's, of it. it's something it's where if you rewatched it, yeah, everything would be onward, wrong. Onward, you were like in, and you're like, oh shit, I want to see where this goes now. I wanted to focus on what Max said. This is a great movie to rewatch. I bet. Yeah. Oh like, yeah. Holy crap! Just like, <laughs> now, yeah, with the context you now have from the full film, it's, it's, it's like, like oh, when yeah, I replayed Metal Gear Solid different. Five. <laughs> yeah. Just, like even just the because part two goes through a lot of part like a, at least a bit of part one over again. Yeah. From like different camera angles and shit, which is great. Oh, it looks so good. I wonder if they and did it's one like, take. And even then, like it has that effect where it's like everything is different now because you Connor, now have new information. I doubt they could have done one take because uh No, I mean I mean the same take. I don't think they could have used the same take because there would be angles where the camera probably would have been in the way of the other camera. Mm, yeah. I was thinking specifically of the scene where um Hideko at the very beginning when Hideko screams for her mom or something in her sleep. 
because they don't see each other. They have the oh, door. there's probably even a lot like of no, like even that, like yeah. the with like the scene from like the angle where it's um, when Suki first walks in to like her room, right? Quote unquote room, where it's like now instead of like the angle it is initially, it's like inside the far wall. Yeah, and it's like and it's just like oh. <laughs> It's great. That's like one thing I do want to mention just here that's like the camera work throughout this movie. Is oh, it's it's really good. My holy mind. crap! <laughs> like the usage of just like zooms and in and out. Not and just like the zooms, but the actual uh, oh, composition the of the shots themselves. Yes. Um, and the were sets used, were really like used in a correct way. I want to get yeah, to one in particular. I want to get to one in particular, but that's a very specific scene. And we'll get to um, that. I want to mention the sets. The sets are beautiful. Mm -hmm. I don't know where they shot this. Um, I do not see any info on it on Wikipedia. But, oh my god, it looks so good. The mansion looks fantastic. There's one scene where it's like pure green. And it's like, life isn't that green. <laughs> mm -hmm. It's uh. Um, it's so damn yeah. good. I watched this on a 4K TV, which I never get the opportunity to do. Um, and oh, I thought that was worth it. it oh. It's so good. And, like, they shot it in that, like, quality and everything, and they did all the proper color correction that they would need to. It's damn good looking. I just got to let you know, Park Chan-wook is largely considered one of the best South Korean filmmakers in general. Um, I highly recommend you check out his other movies. They're available on streaming services we have uh, old boy is his most famous like i said it's more like a john wick mm -hmm. um but it has a lot of the same yeah, like... it's a bit grinier uh but it's is it's that amazing. the one that has the long single shot yes it's okay. the very famous okay. hallway fight scene yes. that a bunch of movies have copied i believe one of the captain americas or something uh no it's one of the marvel tv shows uh mm -hmm. maybe punisher or something copied it while well, homage uh the raid homage did um i think even john wick and a couple times did long one shot one time i mean john wick's all about the long one shots but john wick was entirely inspired by old boy so oh yeah yeah um so yeah highly recommend old boy that's from a trilogy actually um an unconnected trilogy called the vengeance trilogy anyway back to him maybe. yeah i'm just saying this is yeah. to his films he's a great director yeah mm -hmm. from this film alone I, you can tell like oh he's very good at what he does yeah i guess we'll get into this now uh sex <laughs> there are okay that's a not, not that's not even not even just like about like you know the, the sex scenes just there, that's a whole underlying thing yes. through the whole movie it's kind of a plot point. it uh, is very much a plot all... point i didn't know how to get to it so i was just gonna be blunt about it nice um <laughs> i was really startled when they first did the scene um when the handmaiden approaches so, Hideko in the bed and they're like oh how's it gonna go when i'm married and they're all like talking about the husband but they're just you know and yeah and she's, going at it. she's teaching her how to kiss and then teaching her how to do more than kissing i think one of the surprising parts about it to be throughout the entire film is that almost all of the sex scenes feel really um pleasant i don't know how to say it um, it feels like it's not a bad gaze. It doesn't feel yeah. like it's being pornographic. Yeah, it doesn't feel like... Yeah. It feels like it's trying to be a movie, except in this case... Also, i got to say, I watched this movie with my mom. Which I told you not to. <laughs> I, I know you did, but like it's cool because my mom's respectful about it. And I she, she mentioned this, and I kind of agree with her. Uh, she said the same thing about all the sex scenes. Like, they're well shot they're not gratuitous or like depraved or whatever but she mentioned this and i agree uh the last one it kind of feels a little out of place i and think i think it goes one, on a little too long i think the last one's important but i could have seen less of it i think yeah. they could have just cut to the bells <laughs> yeah it's just like you get the idea <laughs> the victory um, sex <laughs> but also i think we'll get to that um but my general feeling is that the scenes between the two female leads feel really playful. They feel really respectful. Um, I think they're kind of beautiful in a um, romantic sense. Yeah. You know? I also it's like, to it's not this. like pornographic. It's just like 
hey, here are two people who are in love having sex. Mm -hmm. My mom pointed this out in the second time that you see the first sex scene with the... Uh... Extended edition. Yes. Yeah, the extended <laughs> cut of it, I guess. Um, the camera angle like pans up above the bed in this one shot. My mom mentioned that it's like one of those Japanese uh, log... I forgot what it's called. It's like an etching. It looks like one of those etchings. The ukiyo-e? I think. I don't know. I'm not going to attempt to... Woodblock carving? Yes, a woodblock carving, yes. Yeah, it's called ukiyo-e. Yeah, the shot was set up to look like one of those with the way the bed is in the shot and the... It's like a, it's a top-down perspective. Uh-huh. That's... Yeah. I didn't notice that, but that's awesome. My they mom show pointed some... that out. <laughs> that's amazing. I'm <laughs> like really confused. I'm like, why do you know that? Um, One of the plot points in the movie is that Hideko's uncle, who is a horrible person, and also probably my favorite character because he's so horrible. Um, he's he's acted magnificently. He has such a presence on the screen. Um, but he is a collector of rare books, mm -hmm. which turn out to be just all like ancient porn. Yes, he <laughs> he holds he holds readings of the females in his family. Um, of these stories and then sells them. Um, it's a, rich, a bunch of rich dudes who they just go sit a little down. beyond readings. They even recreate some of them. Yeah, they have like a little mannequin and like the scene where they uh they whip the guy. They take and the they count, whip, yeah, or, or at least they think it's the count to like it's somewhere the in the back and they have get whipped on the ass. Ooh. That was such a good scene because oh no, yeah, when he, when they're like doing the reading and he's just fucking sweating. Yes. yes. Um, oh yeah. They're just all the fucking I think old rich they, dudes are just fanning themselves. So they're, they're all fanning themselves. Uh, somebody uh, puts a hat over his junk. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> yeah, to like hide it. <laughs> uh, oh yeah. No, I think there's, there's a part like... where like one of them gets up to like talk to one of them and he like gets up all awkwardly and he's like leaning forward. <laughs> <laughs> Um, of course, those seeds are supposed to be horrible because he's forcing his uh, young female relative yes. into it. Yes. Oh, yeah, they are horrible. It's just like it's really funny to see. Like these when you people yeah, when you start it. getting like there's even stuff like I I did notice uh the red um early on in part one when Suki is going through Hideko's clothes she finds a red kimono with the bells in them and yes. you learn later on in part two that. Like she was wearing that that Hidiko as a child was wearing that red kimono, and she would be like beaten over the knuckles oh, with those bells yeah. by Kozuki. Oh god! And, and then seemed... you're like, oh, that has context now. That's not just a little thing, random. Well, thing. she also she also finds the suicide rope. Yes. Mm -hmm. Um. Uh. Okay. How about before we go forward, we just talk about the characters and how we feel about them. I like. Lordy. Uh, there's not many I mean I think they're all yeah. well done um I I really like Sokia as, as the protagonist she even though she's introduced to you as just like a poor Korean woman you immediately get the feeling she's kind of roguish kind of playful mm -hmm. she yeah. immediately like oversteps her bounds with Hidako and Hidako's just like okay sure yeah <laughs> yep. um Hidako is very refined very uh very secretive in part one, but part yeah, two part you one, find you get, out you were given the impression she's that she's stupid. very like aloof and yeah. kind of, but then yeah, it kind of, also kind of like depressed. Watching, you realize, oh no, she's way more aware than she mm -hmm. leads on. She's I kind of resigned. suspected something like that was going on in part one, but man, that was not the direction I thought it was gonna go. Yeah, I thought she um, was gonna like just expose the two of them or something like that. And yeah. you have some plot that goes, no, not at all. But instead we get, like, double, triple agent shit. <laughs> From <Wolver> Ocelot. <laughs> um, the Count is... Eh, I'm kind of iffy on the Count. Um, he's just a nasty... He's just a, a dick. He's honestly a Gatsby character. He just wants wealth to be rich. He wants the rich lifestyle. He fakes it constantly. Yeah. Um, and the flippin' uncle, I know he gets, he doesn't get that much screen time, but he's so fun to watch. He's so Oh yeah, weird. from like the first time you see him, and there's like the very long pan down of the hallway of the library to yeah. him, and you're just like, oh, this is a 
creepy evil dude. He has like ink on his tongue, which I don't get. Um, I think it's because he was writing into the books, and I think you, you lick the ink or some shit to clean wet. the brush or yeah, something weird like that. And and he's just like clad in black, black like full gloves. I will say I kind of felt that character's a little underdeveloped. I think so too. I th he's yeah. like creepy, and you're like, okay, how did he get to this point? Just, um, I, just give me a quick like, rundown at least. Well, I think it's important. I think the biggest detail they give us to that, besides the basement, which you know, that's kind of what everyone figured was down there, um, is that his wife was the person who was doing the readings before Hidako. Yes, um, and I believe she was the one who killed. Yeah, she killed herself. So. Mm -hmm. Well, actually, no, it's also, like, implied murdered, that but... he made her do that. No, no, she was murdered that, and then she hung. She was driven crazy by Koizuki's, like, his whole deal. And she well, was no, 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 no. Remember Hidako asks, hey, I found out what happens when someone hangs themselves by the throat. You know, this, this, and this happens. And he's just like, do you want to see what happened to your aunt? Oh, no. And then yeah. takes her down to the basement, so she was murdered, and then hang. Um, so anyway, part two. Part two, we learn a lot more about what's actually going on. It's more about Hidako, Hidako's everything. Yeah. We learn... Her backstory, her true, like, motivations. Uncle, the or no, the count basically reveals his entire plan. He was like, "Hey, I was gonna do this thing where me and this girl over here were like gonna just use you to get your money and then chuck you in an insane asylum, but you seem to not be stupid, so I'll let you in on it if we chuck the other girl in the insane asylum." Well, no, the the um. No, I think it's like the count actually goes to Hidako first. Yes, the reason, that's what I'm saying. The... The yeah. reason why the Count um, decided to let Hidako in on it was because he understood that Hidako was being abused and, like, tortured by uh, the uncle. Yeah. Uh, so his, his, um, his reason was that he was like, I can get you out of here, I can get you out of this house, because the last person who tried to leave was murdered, you know? Mm -hmm. um, so Hidako agrees to that, and then you get to see... The events of part one again, only from With a different perspective. Completely new context. Yeah, and it's amazing. Um, usually, when you're watching the same thing over again, you get bored. But but now um, it's like no, this is because you're like, oh, I have new information now. This is changes yeah, everything. Well, it's now it's like uh, she's she's pretending to give in to all of uh, Suki's like uh, what is it? Attempts at convincing. Yeah. But the whole time she knows it's BS. Yeah, but now we get like, all these like camera shots where, of like, like right before and after those encounters. Yeah, and they where extend, she like looks away and she's like, "This is stupid," or like, "What am I doing?" You know. They extend a lot of the scenes, mm -hmm. uh, which is great. It helps you get more. Like, um, there's one scene that they completely skip in part one, which makes sense because it's the scene where Hidako and Suki agree to conspire against, um, the count, mm -hmm. which is. A really, really startling scene because it starts with uh, Hidako slapping Suki and then um, them separating. And then in part one, it just cuts there. You're just like, oh, yeah, I guess, that's you know, that's all that happened. They went to sleep. Part two, no! Turns out Hidako went to try to hang herself. Yep. Because she was really sad. She was starting to fall in love with Suki and she was really sad that Suki seemed so dedicated to the. Uh, conspiracy. Yeah. And then Suki catches her. Which and they shouldn't... both, like, admit that, hey, I was in on this plan. And then Hidiko's like, yeah, we had, I had this plan with him. And then they agree, hey, we can just take, take out both Count and the yeah, uncle. Suki catches her and she's like, oh shit. She, she's like not bullshitting me. She's actually cares about me. And then they reveal. One probably the one most memorable memorable thing for me, the flippin' hairpin from the first five minutes of the movie was part of the plot to triple cross the count. Was it? I think so. What, what yeah, because it was it? the lockpick. It was the lockpick uh, she used. 
Okay, but what was the... Like, well, no, are... we know, actually, before that, I want to talk about the, like, good little dark comedy scene where Suki lets go of Hidekawa yes. for a oh, second and yeah. nearly hangs her. And then she's <laughs> like, oh, wait, crap. <laughs> I didn't want to do this. Yeah, it yeah. turned out that the, the hairpin that Suki was given in the very beginning of the film was a lockpick that got her out of the uh, manacles. Oh. And the I thought that was just, like, it. something that and, was like, being used as a lockpick. And, like, the fire was staged by one of Suki's friends. Yeah, and her entire... Oh, my yeah, God. Movie. Yeah, so they, it's It's so good. They ended up having an escape plan to get her out of the insane asylum the whole time. Uh... So yeah, um, there's one scene we skipped in part two that I think is really notable. Scene where they destroy the the uncle's collection. Destroy yes, the porn. Yes, that seems really good. Um, they just go freaking ham and just start ripping up books, knifing them, throwing them into the water, and pouring ink on them. I think it would be a little egregious if not for the fact that in the beginning it's just Suki expressing her anger. She's just like. I've had enough of this. Hidako has been punished too much for nothing. Uh, but then near the end, Hidako starts to get in on it. She like mm -hmm. starts to enjoy it. Yeah. Yeah. And then they um, like take, they like bust the smack the head off of the snake statue. Yes. Yeah. That's so good. Um. Man, yeah. from here. Oh yeah. What about the? There's a part where the count gives. Hideko, uh, when they're talking about getting away, right, he's like, we can escape all this together. He's like, if you do end up getting caught, here's, like, opium or something like that. Yeah, some opium yep. that she yep. can use to, like, kill herself. Yeah. But then instead, she uses that to knock out the, uh, count. the count so she can get away from him. Actually, I think there's one more little scene that I thought was notable. The count... <laughs> smokes women oh yeah he draws little pictures yeah on the on the what was it called paper, the rolling paper cigarette. and then he smokes it which is probably misogynistic but i think that's the point i feel like that's a thing what like other people do that i don't know i've never smoked before <laughs> no no i mean do you think other people do that i don't know maybe back in the day when people would roll their own cigarettes I just thought it was a ridiculous, like Tarantino-esque character trait. I, I, I mean, it could be. I mean, yeah. I love it. It's, it's really entertaining. Um, but that, okay, wait, part three. that actually lets you learn a little bit of something that gets hinted at later, where you know that this guy makes his own cigarettes. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> um. Okay. The wildness of part three. Okay. Okay. Actually. <laughs> We're skipping. There's so much of this movie. It's, There's a lot. Yeah. We can't possibly cover um, it all. Oh, no, no, no. Um, another scene I loved was the duality of Hidako apparently losing her virginity. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. Because in part That's one... That's way later, though. No, no, no. At the in very part, end in, when we learn the truth about that. No, but... no, Mitch. In part one, yes. uh, Suki hears Hidako in the in the marriage marriage hotel. Yeah. Um, he hears mo she hears moaning and assumes that there's something going on. They and have consummated the marriage. <laughs> starts singing. Um, yeah. But then in part two, or was it part three? It was part no, three. Right? It's, either, yeah. it's either mid part it's two not or three early when we part find three. Out the truth. It's in three because they're in the basement. Oh, man. Um, yeah. Oh, yeah. You're right. Oh, God. Man, the um, basement. <laughs> So anyway, part three, you get this fantastic scene with Hidako poisoning the Count by... she. I think he's aware that the drink is poisoned because it's pretty obvious. Um, like he's explicitly not drinking it for a bit. She gets upset and just pours it into her mouth and makes out with him. And so <laughs> just like puts it in his mouth by yeah. a kiss. Which would probably eventually... kind of poison yeah. yourself as well, but who cares? It it's not nearly as much as the one going into the other person. Yeah. Presumably. So yeah, he is poisoned, but it's not like a killing poison. It's just like a. It's enough to like knock him yeah, out for he, a few. He hours. mentions that uh, it's like one drop yeah, to like, like make you drowsy, three drops to knock you out, and then the whole thing to kill you. She put yeah. three drops in a drink. Mm -hmm. 
And that is, is because... Kind of, kind of interesting, because... Well, I guess oh, he yeah. wouldn't care now that he has the money. No, wait, she takes the money. <laughs> yeah, she does yeah. take the money. Well, basically, um, she realizes that after all they've done, the the uncle is going to be after them. And she's right. Um, so she's basically going to knock him out and leave and so she can start her own life and he is left to be picked up and collected by uh, I guess a samurai of some sort a, great, a hitman a great like yakuza hitman yeah yeah they pick up the count and they're just like sitting on the bed when he wakes up mm. yeah. from the opium and they're just kind of laughing at him isn't he like <sighs> give me my pants yeah and then the, on the car ride there, he just, like, smokes three cigarettes at once. That's and mean, they all start <laughs> coughing, and they man, I th open up the windows. You know that, like, he's, he's smoking three cigarettes at once, and you don't know why, but you know that it's for some reason. That scene is so brilliant. He's He looks like this flippin' idiot just smoking three cigarettes at once. Yeah. It's not like he's smoking them fast. He's just smoking three. I thought he was, like, yes. trying to smoke out the car or something weird like that. I thought that. he was trying to, like, like knock them out like the flippin' uh, Metal Gear. <laughs> That's <laughs> not how that works, but yeah. <laughs> um, but, no, it turns out that he knew he was going to the basement, which is yeah. terrifying. And so, um, so he has two blue cigarettes that have fucking mercury in them. And the cool thing about <laughs> smoking mercury is you fucking die. <laughs> yep. It, it's, um, it's not a drug. You just die. <laughs> so we get this absolutely horrifying basement scene. The fucking sex dungeon featuring it's... an octopus. <laughs> and severed penises. Yes. Many. Many. Just and he would have been next. Things in general, there's some there were some vaginas in there too. Yes. I I didn't want to look too hard. There were it. Yeah. It's not pretty. But, and so uh, like you have the count strapped to a table. He gets all of his fingers on one hand, like <sighs> chopped off. Oh, it's so hard to a watch. Drill through the other hand. Uh, um, yeah, and then the count is just like. Uh, you know, you might as well let me smoke, you know? Uh, he's just like, I, I, because he's being interrogated because the, uh, the uncle wants to know where his daughter is and, like, what's going on. And he's like, I don't know. Maybe I'll feel like talking if I get a cigarette. And he's like, fine, whatever. So he and gives him the, um, one of his cigarettes. Uncle just starts asking him, like, hey, how did, did, did you have sex with Itiko, though? <laughs> Tell that's me about it. that flashback, yeah. And he yeah. makes up a story that they did, but it turns out that. Hitoko just made really fake moaning noises and then cut her hand. Mm -hmm. Which is great. It's another great scene. Um, and then they, both the Count and the Uncle die from the fucking mercury smoke. Yeah, there's a lot of smoke. And it, he's like, does this basement have windows? And he's like, no. He's like, good. <laughs> good. Um, <laughs> Mercury's like, gonna uh, kill the, both the of us now. Like, You're gonna be... remark, the final remark of the yeah. Count is like, at least I can die with, like, still having my dick. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He doesn't um, even say, like, dignity in text, just my dick. Cut off. Yeah. I think part of the importance of that scene is to show that the uncle really wasn't concerned with money. Mm -hmm. He was actually, He's like... He's just a horny old man. He, he was really actually, is. like, sexually interested in his niece, which is horrible. Yeah, he wanted to, like, know all about what was actually going on it seemingly to use as reference as writing yeah. material. Yeah. Well, I mean, also, he thought he was going to capture her because he sent out his mm -hmm. goons to investigate all two women leaving the country. Mm -hmm. But of course, they accounted for this. They fake passports and they disguise Hidiko as a man with a mustache. <laughs> and it's great. She yeah. looks very convincing. I convinced yeah. me for a moment. And then they get out and go to Shanghai together. I don't. I believe the they don't they change it from Shanghai to something else. I don't uh, know. No, I didn't know where they ended up. They were initially going to go to Russia, and then they change it to Shanghai. Oh, I thought they changed it the other way. That around. was yeah. where the Count and Hidiko were going to go. Honestly, neither great places to go in World War II, but mildly China better. Been, uh, mildly better yeah. than where they were at. Yeah, they're both pretty bad. 
It depends if it's actually World War II or post World War II, but I believe it's during. I don't know when in World War II, because like you know, there's a point where like it might have also been after, because Japan occupied Korea for a good amount of time. I believe. Yeah. And then Hidako and Suki have passionate, victorious lesbian sex. Um, with, also with the bells, which is a thing that was referenced earlier. It's one of the stories that she mm-hmm. reads earlier on. Some uh, about them touching or something like that. No, it's about if you really love someone, you put the bells in, and you know. <laughs> yes, that's actually I, the story. Yeah, I, I know. Um, they said it more elegantly in the story. Yeah. Uh, the stories, we, we mostly skipped over those. We get like three full stories uh, read with a little Yukioa. Um, Again, I watched this with my mom. <laughs> those were the most though, awkward part, honestly. And even though the stories are um, probably probably the part you could cut from the movie, like, if you needed to, which you don't. Um, mm-hmm. but they're I think important for, like, context. They're real they stories. They sort of allude to future events. Yeah, they allude to parts in the story. They're also real stories, so it's like a history lesson. Um, and it also gives some good character development. And they're also really, really well performed. I think the actress yeah. who plays Hidako did a really good job with those. Um, especially the one with the mannequin where she has to like be suspended in the air. <laughs> Again, the sets are fantastic. Yeah. Oh yeah. The effects are great. There's very little effects, but like costume work and uh, visuals. Mm-hmm. Perfect. It's, it's 10 Absolutely. out of 10. 10 out of 10. <laughs> um, I, okay, general thoughts now. I love this movie, just in general. It's fantastic. Yes. Uh, that's it. <laughs> I, I got to say, too, this is a great movie. It executed on everything it wanted to do extremely well. It's a little on the longer side, but it's one of those that's kinds of movies mean- that... It has explains to why it's that long and it makes sense and it's like it it's earned that time oh yeah and we skipped over a lot of scenes in our we discussion, skipped over a lot but we... yeah there's uh, like no the way scene we're where uh, the count is like confronting suki about how she's kind of blowing it and like he there are a lot of scenes her hand on his crotch and then she fucking like obliterates him with the line stop yes. shoving things so small like that into my hand yeah <laughs> Yeah, Suki has a lot of sass in her, and it's great. Uh, yes. I still, I'm still amazed. I was very shocked going into it, watching that flippin' tooth filing scene. You have yes. Hidako in the bath, and um, Suki gets a thimble. I starts feel filing. like that would hurt a It lot. goes on for a very long time. It is a lengthy scene, and it's just, yeah, uh-huh. Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah, and this like, is like he, a... He looks at Hidako's boobs, and they just keep going. Yeah. And then in... Finger in, in the mouth. <laughs> in part two, I believe Hidako asked for Suki to join. Yes. The bath, the tiny bath. And they cut before, like, uh, yeah. he takes her kimono off. But it uh, is implied that... <laughs> there's some very good... Just some very good chemistry scenes between the two of them with... The, Dressing and undressing, trying on clothes. Yeah. Um, Hidako has Suki try on her clothes a lot. Um, a lot of really good dialogue in those parts too. There's one moment where um, Suki notes that uh, a handmaiden has a lot of control over her master, which is ironic. Um, I I have no no complaints about this movie. Yeah. I think the first part is a little unrepresentative of the rest of the movie, but again, that's kind of the point. (laughs) Um, Yeah. Let's get on to ratings then. Uh, I would give this probably 9 out of 10, maybe 9.5, maybe. I think this is a high 9. 9 out of 10. Yeah. The the only reason that this isn't a 10 is because 10 is a reserved rating for something that is like my favorite. 10 is perfection, and this wasn't perfection, but it was pretty darn close. Yeah. It's hard. Yeah. There's only one thing that all three of us have ever agreed is a 10 out of 10. But that's not saying that this isn't even the same kind of quality as that. It's just, you yeah. know, this is damn good. It's, t- it, nine, it's... nine and a half, 9.99 out of 10. Yeah. <laughs> um, I'm really glad you guys enjoyed it. I think Park Chung-wook is a fantastic director. Um, 
the Vengeance trilogy, which isn't really a trilogy. I don't know why he calls it that. Um, it makes it on, sound cool. It's on the streaming service Canopy, which we used for modern times, uh, which we get for free because we're college students. I think I um, used uh, archive.org for that. That also works. Probably not for old boy. Yeah, I've used Canopy for stuff before in the past. Canopy has the full Vengeance trilogy. I recommend you guys. I recommend anyone to watch them. They're amazing movies. Park Chan Wook is one of the one of the greatest directors alive. I'd say right now. Yeah. Uh, he's fantastic. This came out three years ago, and he's still making movies. So yeah, look forward to that. Uh, is that it? I guess that's it. Now we get on to the showdown. And... Awesome. It's you. It's you, Max. <laughs> So we're discussing, I I was discussing before this, uh, I was looking through my movie list trying to pick up something, and uh, I mentioned that I was kind of disappointed that out of my movie list, there's only one thing that's like automatically underlined by uh, uh, Apple's like notes app that recognizes movies, and it's by far the worst thing on here, probably, I haven't seen it, and... This is going to be an insane tonal shift from what we've just watched. I have to say that. This is a movie called Freddy Got Fingered. Oh, no. It is highly regarded as the worst thing ever. Oh, God, no. No. <laughs> no. Some no. people debate whether or not it was intentionally made to be the worst thing ever. Some people <laughs> don't even know if it was intentionally made to be bad or if it just is bad. And I guess we will have to find out now, won't we? Oh, yeah. no. I, I like watching garbage, so I'm excited, kind yeah. of. I think oh, at boy. the end of the day, if this isn't good, it'll be interesting, <laughs> to say the as least. Long as, as long as it's not boring, because, like, yeah. The Room, you got to watch The Room with friends, because oh, it's yeah. boring. Uh, yeah. Troll 2, however, fantastic viewing experience. <laughs> I have to. Um, I have yet to watch that one. Great. It's great. We should watch it sometime. Um, okay, that is all for this episode. Part one done. All right. Goodbye. Goodbye.